Good night. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. It is indeed my pleasure to be with you another time. I did not plan to come back today, but I decided that I had to come back. Now, today I saw a video on YouTube uh, that came that was published by the uh, the by TVJ by that's the Television Jamaica Network. And uh, the title of the video was Unemployment and Inflation with Dr. Damon King. And I found Dr. Damon King's arguments, you know, about inflation and unemployment rate to be interesting, yet very ridiculous and absurd, to say the least. Now, Dr. King purports himself as this academic scholar and one who knows all that needs to be know, known about the economy. He has this arrogant approach to economics, which I find to be disturbing and to say the least, very, very, very much um, you know, unworthy of someone who is functioning within the public domain. I think that he should be open to free discussions and to ensure that he is making the right decisions. Not only is he making the right decisions, but all leaders in the economic realm who hold very high positions in the Jamaican society. But what I find about him is that he tends to advance these theoretical frameworks, these theoretical ideologies, which are rooted in the free market, market fundamentalist um, system of the economic philosophy of the world. Now, he said he's thinking that everything that happens in Jamaica has to be explained from a textbook narrative and not understanding that we have a real economy with real people's lives being hurt and being put in danger by some of these economic policies and theories that he and his colleagues are advancing. I think in Jamaica, we have too many academic elites who are textbook educated, textbook trained, and they lack the critical thinking and understanding to be functioning in the capacities in which they are. And we manufacture them. And I'm tired of seeing Dr. King on interviews now because he has no solutions, no pragmatic solutions to solving Jamaica's economic problems. He has none whatsoever. And I don't understand what he could have taught his students at the University of the West Indies. I don't know. Because it, it, it's evident to me that he is a shadow economist and he needs to rethink his position. But let me just have you listen to the conversation briefly so that you can at least understand what this man is all about. So let me, yeah, begin the video at this point. So with Jamaica boasting a historically low unemployment rate of 4.2%, today we delve into the implications of this on inflation in the country. Joining this discussion via Zoom is economist, Dr. Damien King. Dr. King, morning, welcome to Smile. How are you, sir? I'm um, well, thank you very much for having me. It's our pleasure, sir. Can you first tell me what drives whether inflation goes up or down? The simple and almost complete answer is that it's the excess of demand for goods and services in general over the available supply. The kind of one line you get from introductory textbooks is too much money chasing too few goods. Too much money chasing too. Um, I'm trying to do the math here, Dr. King. I've never been good at it. But I'm referencing a tweet you made that says, Jamaica's historically low 4.2% unemployment rate. You said, this will now make it challenging for the Bank of Jamaica to keep inflation low since a labor shortage drives up wages and inflation. So it's it's good news, leading to not so good news? Well, so? let, me, let me just break that into its parts. So what is causing the unemployment rate to be as low as it is, is lots of businesses are trying to expand at the same time. Lots of businesses are competing with each other for the limited supply of labor. So when we see an unemployment rate as low as 4.2%, that is effectively full employment. And if you talk to business people, 
the anecdotal evidence corroborates the statistical measure. All business people are telling you that they're struggling now to find new hires. So they are basically hiring from each other. Why would you leave the job you have now to accept another job that you're being offered if they're giving you more money? All right. So that is going to put pressure on wages, on the wage bill in general, on wage levels to go up. Fine. But when wage levels go up, prices of those goods and services have to go up too. So it pushes up inflation. And the long-term consequences of inflation for a country are not good. The short-term consequences aren't good either because it means that you know the people who are least able to manage now have you know have, have, have a problem trying to afford their, their supermarket bills. But the long-term consequences are even worse because it compromises the ability of businesses and investors to plan for the future. Create a Well, you have just seen what the professor economist was just saying. And it obviously he's speaking from a textbook oriented platform uh, and thinking he's not looking at the real economy of Jamaica and understand that many lives are being put in danger and put at risk when we do not look carefully at what is happening in real life situation and the real economy of Jamaica. Now, we have a situation in Jamaica where every year 80% of university graduates leave Jamaica because they can't find good jobs in Jamaica. So they have to migrate, what we call brain drain or emigrate, whatever word you want to use. Emigrate is the right word because it is going outside of one's country. But the fact of the matter is, we cannot continue to have that situation if we want to build a prosperous economy. We need to be able to attract skilled and highly educated people and retain them in Jamaica's economy. But we have not been seeing that in recent times. What we have been seeing since 2013 um, thanks to the IMF, you know, is this sort of austerity program supported by the Washington consensus um, in, in Washington, D.C., the, the, the multilateral organizations like the IMF and the World Bank, who continue to preach to us that we need to reduce our debt to GDP. And this constant reduction of the debt, but the wealth is not expanding in Jamaica. It's almost like saying that you're earning $20,000, right? And you are, you have a debt of over $100,000. And you think that you are just going to, you have a job that pays you, let's say, yeah, you say it's $20,000. So you are way below the ability to pay back your debt. Right. So what you might have to do, you might have to find another job or two so that you'll be able to pay down on your debt. But the fact of the matter is that you cannot continue to have that twenty thousand dollars when you have to pay all your expenses, say, are eighteen thousand dollars per month or nineteen thousand dollars per month. So all you're left with is a thousand if you if you have any money and that a thousand might be used to you know, send your children to school, whatever, 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 whatever other expenses you might accrue, right? Now, the fact of the matter is that if you are just sitting in one job and think that you are going to be able to pay off your debt without expanding yourself to, you know, accept other jobs, a job or two, then you are not going to get out of your debt and things are going to get very bad for you. The creditors are going to come after you right, or for you, right? That's what is going to happen. What needs to be done at this point in time, I would think that we need to see how we can expand our economy. And we have not been hearing how that can be done, how that can be achieved. All we're doing is that we're seeing the same approach to economic development that has been there since 1980s, right? This free market fundamental um, approach to economic growth, which is has not worked, 
right? Everybody knows that that free market economy is not an option if you want to grow your economy. But what we want, what we're still doing in Jamaica, that we continue to still suggest, we still insist that that is the best approach to economic development. Now, here is what Ian Boyne, and this was written from 2014, had to say about this Damon King. And he has not changed. And by the way, I, I listened to him when I went to also the 50th anniversary of independence at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in 2012. I went to one of his chats, right? One of his conferences where he spoke, in which he spoke. And I found him to be very arrogant and a person who had nothing to offer Jamaica, really. In fact, in terms of his economic policies, he had nothing. He's bereft of any progressive economic policies. But again, he's the one who is always, um, you know, uh, spoken to when we're talking about difficult economic circumstances. But here is what Ian Boyne had to say about him. The response to Dr. Damon King's in, in focus critique of the manufacturing sector and of the Jamaica Manufacturers Association, JMA, have been largely disappointing. Attacking the man personally, asking how many jobs has he created, what he has to show, and engaging in anti-intellectual polemics might only serve to reinforce his view that the manufacturers and their defenders are as vacuous as their protectionist policies. Rather than blasting the highly articulate and formidable University of Western Indies academic for reading too many textbooks, we could charge that he might not be reading enough of them. At least he's reading the ones that he wants to read and the ones which are furnishing him with the ideas that he has embraced, but he's not willing to have an intellectual, an intellectual conversation as Ian Boyne here is suggesting, is one in which he's willing and has an open mind to listen to other suggestions, which obviously he's not willing to do, nor perhaps is, 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 he, is he able to do. I think that that might be something that he needs to look at. But I don't think at this point in Dr. Damon King's life that he's going to be having an open mind because he is a diehard free marketer. And I know that for sure. Now, Damon King is a free market fundamentalist. And that's a religion, by the way, a secular religion, who champions the magic of the market. The state should leave development to the market and it certainly shouldn't be toying with industrial policy. And it was very, very evident in what he said at the end of the video. You can, I will post the video at the end of, this, of, of my discussion, but what he said at the end of it, or toward the end of the video, he was intimating that the Bank of Jamaica uses what is called a, a model to solve our economic problems and to predict inflation and unemployment and all of that nonsense. Now, if they're using models, they're not using models that are real. They're just using computer models. And that's what they, they plug numbers into system and then they tell you, they, 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 they verbalize it without thinking uncritically and they tell you and you believe them, right? But what you have to do for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, is to do your own research and to look carefully at the numbers that they are spitting out and how they might cohere with the real economy. And the real economy is really you and I. It's not the guys who are at the Bank of Jamaica. Because many of the times they don't even understand what they are saying. And you could look at how mystified Simone and Neville were. They understood that the guy was not saying, he was just repeating mere gibberish, saying absolutely nothing, circumlocution at its best. The Gleaner is also on that neoliberal bandwagon and wasted no time in devoting an editorial to backing kings in focus speech because that's what they do. That is what the newspapers in Jamaica do, right? They are on the neoliberal 
stand wagon as in going here is suggesting. And many of us don't understand, but I think in Boyne explains it very well that what they just do, leave the market, leave the economy up to the market um, uh, you know, events, what happens in the market. Just allow it, leave it to the magic, as he said, of the market and things will eventually be solved. You cannot do that because you're talking about people's lives here and their livelihoods. And that is what is happening, has been happening in Jamaica for many years years where the economists in Jamaica, from the Dr. Omri Evans and all of these people that you're seeing, do not understand how real economies work. They just don't understand how real economies work. And these are the people like the Dr. Nigel Clark that Orlando Patterson praises because he himself doesn't understand how real economies work, because if he did, he would be praising the works of Andrew Holdes and, uh, and Dr. Nigel Clark. Neither would he be praising any, as a matter of fact, because all of these guys, all they preach, including the Gleaner and the Observer, all they preach is this doctrine of the free market ideology, which is utter nonsense if you're talking about economic growth, that is real economic growth, not artificial economic growth. Damien King and the editorial writer need to catch up on their reading of both economic and industrial development history, as well as on contemporary economic development. Right? You know, that is what he needs to do because he tends to be on this free market side of history and that has already been declared a failure that theory has already been declared a failure it doesn't work and when is jamaica going to understand that and as i've said on many times a lot of times they just don't want to understand it because it conflicts with their ideologies. And it's a religion. It's a blind religion. And he's talking as if, oh, yeah, it's complicated and only the economists can understand because economists are the ones who understand that everything is interrelated. Nonsense. Because that's the whole point of also studying and doing holistic medicine. And during the pandemic, we found out that, you know, just studying the eyes or the ears or the hands is not sufficient to understanding the human body. If you want to be an effective doctor, you've got to study holistic medicine and look at the entire body because every organ and tissue are connected. Right? And that is what he needs to understand. So it's not about economists because as far as I'm concerned, if he was any great expert, as he touts himself to be, I think the Jamaican economy would be in a much better position. I'm not suggesting here, Dr. Damon King, that we would have been rich, but we have been poor for all these years. And many of you have been at the helm, the, 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 the helm of the, the economic policies. And the University of the West Indies at Mono Campus should be ashamed of itself because there is no policy that it is declaring and it's not challenging the economic policies coming from the, the International Monetary Fund. So what is the purpose of a university? Just to indoctrinate students into a particular ideology or is it to empower them with knowledge that they can think critically and question orthodoxy? But it seems to me in Jamaica and by extension the world at large that we think education is just going, studying some, going to school rather, studying some textbooks and getting a degree. And we think that we have all the knowledge that we need to have. Right? But knowledge cannot be irrelevant to people's lives and livelihoods. It must be relevant 
to their lived experience. And in Jamaica, it's a lot of nonsense that black people talk. You know, one of the things about Damian King, and let me just put it into proper con um, into proper context as an educator. Do you know that there are some educators, and we have a lot of them in Jamaica, who will tell their students, oh, you can't write. Oh, you don't know English, or you don't know mathematics. And you don't tell them what are their strengths and their weaknesses and the things that they need to work on to be able to master the subjects. You just, they can't do it because it's complicated for them or they can't be a doctor. Do you know how many doctors that Jamaica has produced outside of Jamaica? Jamaicans who had to leave Jamaica to become a doctor or a lawyer or to become a teacher or to be, just become somebody because their teachers told them that they didn't have the scholastic aptitude to be able to do anything worthwhile with their lives without giving them that fundamental diagnosis and helping them to understand how they can reach, how they can achieve their goal, their goals. Right? That is what is happening. Same thing Dr. King is doing, pretending as if the economics and the economy of Jamaica is something so complex that the ordinary, the layman in Jamaica cannot understand the dynamics of how the economy works from day to day. And that is utter nonsense, Dr. Damon King. And you need to grow up intellectually. You need to grow up intellectually, as many of the professors at the University of the West Indies at Mono Campus need to grow up because it's not just about attending conferences. It's not just about publishing some journal articles or some newspapers or newspaper articles or publishing a book or two. It's about being able to transform the society in which you live. That is the purpose or one of the purposes of a good all-rounded education. And Dr. Damon King, all you're telling us is that you have been indoctrinated into that religious, economic, uh, free market fundamentalism. That is indoctrination at its best. And you must understand that you're not talking about just your home, you're talking about people's lives, over 2.8 million people on the island. And they have families to feed. When are we gonna get it right when we talk about inflation and unemployment? When is Jamaica going to get it right? Because all of what they're saying over the years, all of what, if not most of what they have been saying, cannot be verified. It's just utter nonsense. Right? We need to grow up. And Jamaicans need to be more critical. And I think that Simone and Neville could have asked harder questions. You did ask a question, Neville. And you should have insisted when you asked him if he were the uh, the manager, the president of the Bank of Jamaica, what would he have done? And to specify clearly what he would have done. And he was just circumlocuting. He had nothing really of substance to say. Had nothing of substance to say what he would have done. Because that is who Demon King is just an arrogant person who often does not know what he's talking about. But you know, he's functioning in an environment where people are bereft of critical thinking skills so he can get away. It's time for us to get our acts together because if not, we are really treading rapidly in the direction in which Haiti is now um, at. We are really treading that road of becoming another failed state within the Caribbean region. If we do not get our acts together, and it seems to me that our local oligarchs there are quite comfortable should that 
happen? Should us, should, 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 should Jamaica move in the direction of another Haiti in the Caribbean region? I think that it seems to me that our global or our, our local oligarchs are quite comfortable with that scenario. What a shame. What a shame. You should be ashamed of yourselves understanding that people like Marcus Garvey and all the other people who worked hard for our independence and you're just going to give it up by transforming us into economic slaves. All the best to you. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in another video.